Okay, everyone, welcome back to episode 23b of our ongoing C++ tutorial series. I'm Damien, in case you haven't heard, and I'll be teaching you this uh, episode. Now, we left off with homework to recreate uh, the calculator that we did with case logic. And now you'll see that I've made a couple of changes to uh, where we left off. Um, we did prod some last time. I changed the name to do calcs, um, and it's going to take in three variables rather than two, one of type int. And that's totally fine. Despite it returning a type double, you can send it type ints. You can send it whatever you want here. If you want, you can send it boolean or character or strings. Uh, that doesn't really matter. Um, I do need to change this around just a little. Uh, so. 4 is going to be divide. Um, what is it? We always use 5 for power, so press 5 to raise a number to a power, and, and L, and press 6 to mod a number. And that's, of course, take the modulus, uh, which is the remainder of a number. And so that's all we need to do on our uh, display. But what I'm actually going to do is see out just one more line and then say, please enter your choice. Um, I usually put the request for user input on a different line. Um, so that's pretty much going to do it. Um, so display menu is going to lead straight into our CN for choice. Um, we can force the user to do stuff. Again, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Um, we're going to be getting into string stream around less than 30. Um, so just hold tight and we're going to get into real validation around that point. Or well. Maybe not real, but pretty real. Um, so we're going to then take in two numbers. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we have choice, which is their choice from the menu. And then we have x, and then we have y. Um, so here's how we're going to create this sort of a... Hmm, do I really want it to return a double? You know what? I'm going to have it be a void. I'm just going to handle everything in there so I don't have to return anything. So there we go. It's going to be a void. So we're just going to call do calcs. And we're going to do int. Um, I'm sorry. We actually we don't type that there. We type in the variables we're going to be sending. So choice x why and here's how we're going to handle it so now do calcs has three localized variables we're going to say int um, we'll call it menu choice and then we had these called a and b and I see no problem with that we can keep them a and b even though they're x and y here um, if we want we can keep them x and y here it doesn't Whatever you name here, it's kept within this scope. It lives and dies within this scope, and it doesn't affect anything up here except for what we return. And since this is a type void, it's not being returned to anything, or it's not returning anything anyways. Um, there will be exceptions to that in the near future. So, okay. What we're going to do is we're going to make a quick case. We're going to do switch and we're going to switch based on menu choice and we're just going to label that end switch we're going to give it plenty of room like we usually do we're going to do case one set up some brackets and we're going to just simply see out um, we're going to do uh, what is it, a plus b equals 
and then we're just going to do a plus b. This is going to be very basic in case you haven't noticed yet. Um, I'm trying to save you guys as much time as possible uh, and hopefully I can manage to do that. So we're just going to copy paste this whole nonsense right here. So that's going to be two, uh, three, four, five, six. And so I'm just going to renumber these, five, six, and then we're going to make a default. And default is going to be just see out something broke. And I need quotes around that. And in this case, something really didn't break. It's just, that's what happened. Um, and since we code default at the bottom, we don't need a break in it. Just FYI. Uh, all the other ones do need a break, which I always seem to leave out until right before I'm about to compile a program. So, okay. Uh, in this case, it did subtract. So then we need to change that to A minus B. This is multiply. So that needs to get changed to multiply. Uh, this was divide. So that needs to be divide. And this is raised to an exponent, so this actually needs to be changed to pow a comma b. And then lastly, this one is mod. So we need to cast both of these to ints. Um, I didn't include cmath, so I have to do that. Um, you know, I think um, I'm just going to show you uh, the way to do mod without casting, because there's really no reason for me not to at this point. It's called f mod f, and then you just do what you want. I think it's a comma b, and I think that's the syntax for it. Um, I hope that's right. I haven't used it in quite a long time. Uh, that just means floating point modulus. So, okay. We're going to try this. It might not compile because I haven't used f mod f in 100 years. Oh, and I just need a semicolon there. So, all right, we're going to try that again. Um, and we're going to try... I'm going to try modding right off the bat. I want to see if I remembered the code right. Okay, so we're going to say 0 0.5 is our number. Um, and then we're going to try 0 0.3 as the second number. So the remainder should be 0 0.2. And yeah, that worked out beautifully. Um, the only thing is we need a backslash n there. And uh, you know what? We won't quit. We're going to just try... 5, and we're going to try 2 to the 4th power. That should be uh, 16. And that's beautiful. And so yes, we will quit. And that is how you're going to modularize this, and uh, that's what I mean by make it modular. It's, it's separated into different modules that have different functions. So now, whenever you want this menu to be displayed, you can do it a hundred times throughout your program if you want, and that's fine. And whenever we want a calculation done, we can just put, you know, do calcs right in our code and then just pass it what we want done. And so I think that, well, hopefully at this point, you guys can see how powerful this has the opportunity of being. Apparently I left some things running before uh, we got started, so I have a whole bunch of stuff open. But uh, hopefully you guys can see how powerful this sort of thing has the capability of being. Um, I want you guys to play around more with this. I'm not going to give you another homework assignment that's really based solely uh, on what we've covered here, um, but we are going to be covering this for the next few uh, lessons because this is this is very big stuff and it's very important that you understand how these work. Um, I don't really use these too often in my... Uh, smaller projects though. So I suppose that's kind of a good thing. Um, the kind of important thing though is when you do get into, or well, if you ever are interested in getting into programming as a career, you, this is everywhere. I mean, 
most of the time int main is going to be you know just a couple of lines long that's going to call on functions that call on other functions that call on other functions and it's it's a very big uh, sort of dribble down effect well i hope you guys like this video thank you for spending another uh... ten minutes with me i'm damien and i'm glad i could help you out